Russo Jr. Assigning this one the designation SCP-187 if there are no objections. Russo Sr. That was taken yesterday. Just put it in an unused slot until we can figure out how to make a formal designation stick. Kingham. The old title changes every time the page is refreshed. I assume it has something to do with the way this affects information. Scranton. Yes, this should serve as an example of the anomaly's properties. I recommend leaving this intact, since it's basically harmless. Russo Sr. No objection. Russo Jr. <sighs> Two days later and we're still out of designation. Let's just use an informal designator so the report doesn't have to use the item and the anomaly to death. Grimes. How about Demote Voce, Italian for Out of Many Voices? Russo Jr. Fine by me, unless someone who's actually fluent in Italian can improve it. Russo Sr. Not assigning an object class. It's not going to stay put. Then the database search will probably choke on it somehow. Ben Venisti. In lieu of an object class, Demulti Voce makes documentation a huge pain as you can tell, but preventing the spread of its anomalous effect has been pretty doable. Stay on your toes until we figure out exactly what it can and can't do though. Rosen. The database search already excludes info hazards, so you don't need to worry about that. Kingham. For the Voki itself, I see no reason a standard lockbox wouldn't work. Should definitely stay at Site 82 since transport risks incidental contamination. Ben Venisti. A few of that site's lockboxes are password locked. I'm not seeing anything to suggest it would affect those, but keeping it under literal lock and key it seems like a prudent precaution nonetheless. Graph. Anything keyed to specific phrases, numbers, etc. could be unreliable if the anomaly goes off script. That should be the guiding containment principle. Ben Venisti. What about retinal scanners? Site-82's bulk storage is behind one, and without those or ID badges we'd be pretty low on effective security options. The site has a strict don't rely on facial recognition policy, and I don't really want to know why. Graph. Retinal scans are almost definitely fine. Just remember to CC me on any bug reports in that system. Scranton. Besides the non-reliance on key phrases and formal signifiers, containment should basically entail a soft quarantine on any affected documentation on site-wide class 3 gymnastics every three weeks. Kingham. Either you just suggested moving all of the documentation to the temporary holding cells and posting guards only on the outside of the wing, or our fields have very different understandings of the phrase soft quarantine. Graph. I see why you'd be confused. As far as memetics and info hazards go, a soft quarantine would permit limited information transmission, but cross-linking affected documentation to anything else would be kept to an absolute minimum, and properly conditioned personnel i.e. everyone with enough clearance for this entry anyways, except Rawson, but I doubt he read enough for it to matter, are the only ones who can come within two layers. There's a whole protocol about it, but I can't exactly leave a link here. Graph. Hold on. 3Gs aren't standard for this type of info hazard. Scranton, elaborate? Scranton. Did you read my work on info specialty synchronization and linked streaming plexus? My last paper discusses how these phenomena can mimic an area of effect, and it seems like that could be going on here. With an AOE this big, we can't afford not to try. Graph. I reread the paper, and I agree. Three Gs for the whole site, twice per month. Grimes. Anomaly-centric or item-centric description. Ease of reading would normally dictate item-centric, but given the circumstances, I feel that the anomaly should get a thorough description first. Russo Jr. Item-centric is fine. Grimes. I'll get to work. Grimes. De Multi Voce is a harlequin mask made of carnival glass. Actually, hold on. That rhymes. Harlequin mask made of carnival glass. Could that be relevant? Graph. Doubtful. Rhyme-sensitive anomalies usually manifest differently, and an English rhyme would be bizarre in this case, but I would not rule it out. Good eye, Grimes. Garcia. The lab didn't find anything unusual, except traces of oil on the inside, which suggests it's been worn. Hard to say when, though. Grimes. The central anomaly involves the disruption of certain information, randomizing some pieces and replacing others with whatever discussions went into it. Kingham. Seems to me that it's specifically affecting consensus-based information, like standard anomaly summaries. 
which is why there's nothing close to the real containment report here, just the stuff that's supposed to stay behind the scenes. Things like titles, protocols, object classes, explicit statements of authority, and a few other identifiers switch around at random, too. Not sure why our names are unaffected. Scranton. This is a good layman summary of the affected information. Essentially, anything authoritative in the right way is suspectable. Graph. Of course, it's massively more complicated that, and in ways we actually understand. But I guess that's good enough for the average reader. Why bother getting into the specifics when nobody reads or understands our papers anyways? Scranton. Take it easy, Vanessa. This is going to the final version. Graph. D. Multivoci seems to have several vectors for affecting information. There's a classical info hazard, which means anything that deals with it in any real detail is affected. Anything that references or links to said documentation can be affected, but this usually has a reference threshold of 4. Benvenisti. As an example, it affected the stack of post-it notes I leave on Kingham's desk after I left a third about Vochi. Presumably the stars aligned. Graph. Believe it or not, I'm half convinced that there's some astrological significance to Demulte Voci, but nothing that would affect the reference threshold. Grimes. Not too long after initial containment, we figured out it got a lot weaker after a 310 meter radius. I'm gathering that the Brainiac consensus is that it's not just a standard area of effect, though? Scranton. By way of advanced and for hazard studies and my own pet theories? Yes. It's not really a concern as far as containment goes, but there are some research implications that we will add once there's anything concrete to say. Russo Sr. The death toll is 43 containment summaries like this one, 270 other Foundation documents and assets, and at least 450 affected pieces of information outside of containment. Garcia. The fact that there is no actual death toll is a testament to our fine researchers, containment specialists, and archivists. Benvenisti. We're already well paid, don't feel the need to flatter us too. Garcia. Somehow, it felt appropriate. Kojo. So, the Multivoci is something I picked up on vacation. Yes, those rumors about Foundation agents stumbling across SCPs on vacation are real. Or at least they were for me. Anyways, I was checking out an antique shop in Sicily, which is to say I was asking for trouble, when I find an extremely pretty glass mask that looks like it belongs to a jester. The woman at the front counter, called herself Greta, was adamant that she did not want money for it and instead wanted to barter for it. After a delightful hour talking over coffee with a seven-year-old woman, I got the mask. She claimed that it could dispel lies, and thus had no more use to her. I got the sense that it wasn't a conversation she wanted to have, so I didn't press her. I flew home two days later. I actually triggered its properties the day before I left while on the phone with my mom. When I attempted to sum up Instagram's responses to the mask, it ended up reciting all 20 comments. I chalked it up to being tired and brought it with me to work. Same thing happened there, and that's about when they started to look at its containment. Strunk. The antique shop from which Dimotovoci was obtained had been closed down prior to our follow-up visit. The proprietor of the laundromat next door claims that the store had been operating at a loss for an extended period of time. Kojo. This is consistent with what she told me. Well, she didn't mention that she was going broke but she did seem skinny in a sort of unhealthy way and wasn't shy about letting me buy her lunch. Never would let me pay for the mask, though. Money is obviously not going to be a concern for containment since we don't plan on selling it anytime soon, but perhaps this could shine some light on its anomalous properties? Kojo. Hold on. Why are those words in red? I didn't do that. Graph. I have a hunch, but nothing concrete yet. We'll look into it. Kingham. I somehow doubt De Multivoki was made purely to mess with us. It probably has some sort of history. Wasn't there supposed to be an inquiry in the area about it? What happened to that? Strunk. There was, but predictably. I can't exactly condense the information into a summary. I'm this close to just cherry picking some statements from my helpful pile and slapping them together. Strunk. It worked. Here we are. Display interview snippets. Translated from Italian. Anonymous civilian. You're looking for Greta Lanza. She ran an antique shop in the city, but she's been missing. I realized something went wrong when she didn't show up for mass. 
drunk. Examine Miss Lance's home. It had nothing of interest, and in fact very little at all. It's consistent with the theory that she was struggling with money. Kojo. I looked at the picture you gave me, and it's definitely her. Anonymous civilian. She never talked about the mask. But she did collect glass sculptures. It wouldn't surprise me if she had something like that. Scranton. If she knew about the Mojavoch's anomalous properties, I'm not surprised she kept quiet about it. Anonymous civilian. See, si, her grandson brought it in for a project we were doing in class last month, and said it was magical. Greta showed up part way through the kid's presentation and took it from him. She seemed very upset about the whole thing. I couldn't figure out why. Anonymous civilian. That's about when it started happening, see? At first I thought someone was vandalizing the files, but then there was something that kept me from changing them back. I'm sorry, I don't know how to describe it. I locked the school's record system down once I realized it was spreading, and I've been too scared to use it since. Strunk. Most of the affected information was on the school's computers. But to be safe, I called in a containment team to scour the town. Grimes. If she knew the Demote Voce is stronger when it's nearby, that would explain why she moved it to her shop afterwards. She was comfortable pawning it off on some stranger, though, so perhaps she didn't realize it could snowball. Kingham. Or she didn't care. She's getting old and going broke. Maybe she just wanted things to stay stable for however long she planned on staying. Kojo. Alternatively, she wanted someone who needed it to have it. When I spoke with her about how I recently found out I was adopted, she seemed sympathetic, but made a point of saying that some people need lives like that. I didn't press her on it. Grimes. That would make sense. The lunch she wanted you to have with her was probably an audition of sorts, to see if you could use it well. Kojo. She probably didn't count on me handing it off to such a secretive control freak of an organization. Shame, that.